Welcome back. Well, as a lot of you may know from my last video, I was scheduled to have knee surgery, and I did in fact. I had a full knee replacement, and uh, the surgery went remarkably well. Uh, it was done with the assistance of a Mako robot, and the parts were custom crafted for my knee specifically down in a place in Florida, and um, shipped up here, and uh, they were press fit titanium. They just pressed into place and uh, I was good to go. No screws, no glue, no nothing. So, uh, you know, as far as, as far as knee operations go, that's state of the art. And um, I won't lie to you, it's not an easy operation. I've got a lot of uh, therapy and a lot of exercises to do probably for, I'm told, I'm told that a full recovery is up to a year. So uh, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any, uh, you know, thoughts that it's, I'm going to be doing a marathon very soon. And, uh, you know, I, I was on a, um, I was on a basically confined to a walker uh, for the first two and a half weeks or so, and then I was able to use my cane. Uh, now I can amble around a little bit without a cane. I won't go too far without it because functionally the knee is still quite weak. The knee works fine. It's the, you know, the swelling that you have to deal with. That has to be uh, addressed with a lot of icing and um, throughout the day and also uh, a lot of exercise and, and therapy that uh, that I've been attending to to uh, basically re-strengthen those tendons and uh, muscles that uh, were affected during the surgery. So anyway, why am I here today besides that? My lovely daughter was kind enough to let, let me borrow her Ruger SP-101 22 long rifle revolver and of course being a revolver, it can shoot 22 long rifle, 22 longs, 22 shorts in any any of the uh, 22 rim fires. Um, it's a it's a remarkable it's a remarkable uh, revolver. Very 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 uh, compact. You could call it a kit gun. Uh, I would say that it's a it's the ideal 22 size. I mean, it's not it's it's big enough. Uh, but it's not too big, you know. For for packing in a holster, if you if you're going out uh, hiking or something, uh, if you if you want to put this in your fishing vest or something like that, it's it's ideal. Um, it has a nice long sighting plane. It's 4.2 inch long barrel. As you can see, it's all stainless steel. Uh, the factory the factory grips are rubber with these uh, wood inserts and. Um, it's a handsome gun, it really is. It's uh, very, very nicely made, sturdy. It's made on the same pattern as the uh, famed uh, GP100. Of course, the SP101 is a smaller, more compact frame. Uh, and unlike most of the SP101s, uh, the 22 has a fully adjustable rear sight and it has a luminous uh, green fiber optic sight. Terrific, easy sighting plane. Uh, it locks up tight as a drum. Uh, it's an eight-shot, eight-shot revolver, and um, you know the the GP100 offers ten shots, but it's of course it's a it's a heavier it's a heavier gun. Uh, this is I think this is about as nice as it can get. The uh, trigger squeeze, very firm. It's a very firm trigger squeeze, and that's owing to the fact that this is a uh, it's a 22, and 22 uh, rim fires require a good solid strike of the uh, primer in order to have consistent ignition. Now, let me explain a little bit. You can have you can have ignition, and it may not necessarily be a full powerful ignition where the where the primer gets a full flash. So that's required. You can you could perhaps dress down that trigger uh, so that it has a, a, a lighter uh, hammer fall. But I, I'd be very cautious about doing that, and I'd certainly do it in company with a chronograph to make sure that I haven't been reducing my uh, consistency from shot to shot. You know, see see what the averages are. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, there's no need to uh, lighten the uh, hammer, the uh, trigger pull whatsoever, um, and also the the uh, single action is. It's a little bit difficult to pull back because mainly because uh, this this gun has got a relatively uh, you know it's got a relatively abbreviated uh, hammer spur and that's that's in keeping with its compact size. It can't be much longer than that, otherwise it would be out of proportion to the gun and it would get in the way of your hand when you cocked it. So 
it has a nice it has a nice uh, smooth trigger pull though now as you can see uh, I'm dry firing it many 22s I would not recommend dry firing it however right in the right in the Ruger's owner's manual they recommend that you can dry fire their 22s as far as I know there's uh, all their firearms you can dry fire but they recommend specifically that you can dry fire this SP 101 uh, without harming the uh, without harming the uh, cylinder so uh, and without harming the firing pin or anything this has a this has a transfer bar and the standard uh, flat hammer that uh, Ruger uses without a firing pin a hammer nose and the firing pin is uh, integrated into the frame so a spring-loaded firing pin but all in all it's a very very smooth beautiful double action stiff but very smooth there's no uh, no creep to it at all and very nice double action pull single action couldn't be sweeter than that. Really nice crisp double action. So what I've got is inside my indoor range here, I've got 50, 50 feet to the target, and uh, I've got some new tag board targets that are, that are true uh, regulation NRA uh, 50 foot targets. And uh, we're just gonna see what this, what this gun can do with several types of ammo. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot some, they're all CCI, they just happen to be, that's, that's what I can get the easiest. I've got the chronograph set up at, uh, I would say it's about uh, four foot, five foot instrumental velocity to the center of the chronograph. So we're gonna see what this, we're gonna see what this uh, beautiful revolver does at 50 feet. So let's step over. And I'm, I'm gonna be stepping over a little bit lightly. So we're ready to begin. I'll be using these, uh, I just got these recently. Uh, tag board targets. These are uh, official size. They're not official targets because I've got this uh, red dot in the center, but uh, they're official uh, size rings as a 50-foot uh, timed and rapid-fire pistol target. So we'll see how these different rounds do. I'm going to lead off with the uh, Mini Mag 22 long rifle. I'll get my chronograph set up here and uh, should be ready to go. You're going to be hearing these. Uh, you're going to be hearing these shots being called off. And I'll be firing. Uh, I'll be firing. Five shot groups are sufficient. That way, there I don't mess up my. <laughs> don't mess up my. Neat, neat little. Uh, trays and for the sake of brevity if I were to fire all eight rounds it would be quite a uh, time-consuming process and uh, the Ruger cylinder spins exactly as the Smith & Wesson cylinder does it spins uh, counterclockwise so we're going to position the empty cylinder to the left of the charged hole And I'll be using a six o'clock hold on those bulls. One thousand eighteen. Nine hundred eighty five. One thousand twenty four. 1,009 964 Just checking my trigger squeeze, make sure I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to do. And uh, I'll switch my chronograph over here now and go down and change targets. I'm going to be back in a little a little while. I've got this I've got this uh, knee that I'm dealing with. So uh, the next ones are going to be the uh, segmented. I'll get that one staged and ready to go as I uh, go down range and 
pull that target down and put a new one up. Okay, next come five rounds of the uh, segmented. These are very high velocity in the uh, rifle. Uh, advertised velocity is uh, 1640 from a rifle barrel and uh, I was getting over 1400 feet per second with um, the Walther Colt 1911 pistol. So we'll see what these do with the, because uh, these have a, this has a one inch, an almost one inch shorter barrel. Theoretically, let me talk about that for a minute. Autos are uh, measured differently. Uh, they've got a, they've got a closed breech. So every, the, the barrel length is measured from the face of the breech, from the back of the breech. This bar revolver barrels are always measured from just the barrel length itself, not including the, uh, not including the cylinder. Now remember with a uh, closed breech of a uh, 1911 or any, or any auto, you've got this basically uh, becomes part of the breech, becomes part of the uh, barrel length. So, uh, and, and also too, we've got, a, we've got a cylinder gap where some gas uh, pressure is released uh, just behind the bullet and that can reduce the, that will reduce the uh, pressure behind the bullet and the velocity. So there's a, there's a give and take to it. So even though you've got a, uh, even though you've got a so-called uh, four inch, 4.2 inch barrel here, uh, if you were to measure it all the way to the rear of the breech, you'd be adding probably another inch and three quarter. I don't know what the actual dimension is, but you do get a longer sight radius because of that uh, additional length. So uh, the measurement, the, the measuring uh, system is, is different. Uh, so we'll see what the velocities are anyway in comparison. I think that was it. Yep. Listening to listening to that voice, uh, it, it it throws my count off too. But um, as you can see, we certainly didn't get fourteen hundred feet per second. Um, we got uh, more on the order of about almost twelve hundred uh, feet per second. I'll give you the averages. Uh, later on. We're going to go now to the uh, 22 short. These are the uh, CCI shorts and I'll go down and change the target again and we'll get right back to it. Okay, now we're moving forward with the uh, CCI, they call them CCI target shorts um, and these have an advertised velocity of 830 feet per second from a uh, rifle. Uh, when I say from a rifle that's unless it's specified otherwise um, that would be the uh, advertised instrument that they would have used. I've always loved shorts. You know, shorts have gone up in price. They, they used to be, you know, when I was when I was a youngster, uh, shorts were a bargain. They were uh, they were considerably cheaper than long rifles, and we used to always buy shorts for uh, plinking down the swamp and things like that. Um, it was just a, it was just a fun, a fun uh, bunch of ammo. But they're not now. Uh, I think right now they might be running a little bit less money than long rifles, but it's not. It, sometimes it's, it's it's actually more because uh, even though the uh, raw materials are less. Uh, you're talking about uh, a lesser lesser production run, so uh, they always charge you for special items, and that's, it's become a specialty item now. And uh, years ago, 
you know, many many rifles had tubular magazines, uh, and and they were they were compatible with every type of uh, any length of uh, 22 rim fire that you wanted to shoot. But nowadays, uh, most people are shooting, uh, you know, semi-automatic rifles, and uh, they have typically um, a stacked box magazine, and that's not uh, that's not conducive to uh, having different lengths. So here we go. We're gonna. Try out these shorts and see what they do. The lighting here is really good for uh, Wow, that's 806. Eight hundred five. Seven seventy three, eight hundred eight, eight hundred thirteen. Now, I'm really surprised about that. Uh, we we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, for an advertised velocity of uh, 830 feet per second, uh, I, I'm getting I'm getting a lot of uh, shots that are over 813, 808, 773, 805, 806. So I'm I'm getting down near full velocity. That's quite an amazing thing out of a, out of the revolver. So I'm not getting quite the uh, inefficiency from the uh, barrel gap. So. Let's try out the next ones. I'm, I'm going to make sure I have this uh, changed over to my uh, next one, which is going to be the CB Longs. Load that up, ready to go. And go down and change my targets. Be back in a half hour or so. <laughs> All right. Next in line now, we have the uh, 22 CB Longs. Now what they mean by that, CB is basically a cartridge which uh, is generally charged without, typically was charged without powder, uh, with only with only a priming mixture. How they actually do it is uh, neither here nor there, but that was traditionally how it was done. Um, the uh, long means that it's using the same length case as a long rifle, uh, but long always denoted a 29 grain bullet. So in other words you had a you had a 29 grain short with a short case, then you had the long which had a 29 grain bullet but with a longer case, and then finally you had a 40 grain bullet. And they've sometimes of course now you have many different variations, 32, 36 and whatnot. But the next step up was the uh, 40 grain bullet in a long case. That became the long rifle. So we'll load this up. These are quiet, out of a rifle, they're very quiet, uh, out of a revolver with a uh, open, with that uh, open gap, they'll be, they'll be noisier. Um, certainly you want to, with a revolver especially, you want to make sure you wear hearing protection. These are not, these are not uh, without danger for your hearing out of a revolver, so. I've got the right uh, I've got the right chronograph information. Oh that's five hundred five. That's neat. <laughs> Four hundred and ninety five. There's hardly any jump to the gun whatsoever. That's cool. I like that. I don't know where they're going downrange. Five hundred thirty-nine. But if they're accurate, what a neat. Uh... Oh, 
I think that was the last round. 480. It was. I was able to count that time. As you can see, the velocities are down on the bottom, but uh, what a what a neat plinking round. Get the last one staged here. That would be the CCI Quiets. And the CCI Quiets uh, differ by the fact that they're using a 40 grain bullet and it's a uh, 710, same 710 foot per second velocity as the uh, CBs. And also they make a CB short for people who have a uh, uh, a short chamber. You know, if you have a if you have an older pistol that has a short chamber, that's uh, that's what you want. Or rifle. Now we're going to be shooting the uh, 22 Quiet CB 22 Quiet. Uh, again, these are these are a greatly reduced charge, 710 foot per second advertised, and uh, but with a 40 grain bullet as opposed to a 29. So we'll see what happens here. And for reasons that I'll explain later, um, I don't think it will have great results, but we'll see. Six hundred sixty-two. Maybe we will. Six hundred fifteen. Six hundred fifty-nine. 704 okay well I'm heartened by those velocity numbers I'll go down quickly and uh, grab that target and uh, we'll talk about this okay let's run down the numbers before we take a look at the targets with the uh, CCI mini mag uh, we had a uh, out of five shots we had an average of a exactly a thousand feet per second extreme spread of 60 feet per second yeah that's met to mess that's standard deviation of 22 uh, feet per second which isn't too bad um, looking at the uh, the averages were pretty much uh, all in line with this one shot that uh, fell out considerably at about 600 uh, 959 feet per second it produced this target right here uh, pretty darn good uh, even with even with one shot that was out of the average the average ran between 978 and 1022 according to uh, my uh, chrono so uh, but as you can see uh, you know this 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 gun hasn't been sighted in yet per se uh, it's this when I uh, when uh, my daughter obtained this gun it had been virtually unfired uh, it's a uh, it was produced 13, I think, nine years ago, but it was, it's uh, been unfired. So this is how it shoots uh, out of the box. It was doing very nicely. Look at that. Um, all these shots, if that was, if that was uh, zeroed uh, for this gun, every one of those would be inside the 10 ring. Beautiful accuracy, terrific accuracy. And here we have the uh, CCI segmented. How did those do? Well, we had a uh, we had an average of all shots of uh, 1,188 feet per second. So basically, a uh, 188 feet per second faster than the uh, CCI mini mags. Nowhere near the kind of velocities I was getting up at over 1,400 feet per second with a uh, the five inch uh, 1911 barrel. But the extreme spread was pretty pretty wide, 104 feet per second. And standard deviation was uh, 34, and uh, the reason why you had a pretty good standard standard deviation and extreme spread of, that was 104 is largely because uh, it was 
basically only one shot that uh, caused that uh, caused that uh, error. And as you can see here, there's there's one there's one shot that drops out of the bottom, and there's also one shot that uh, rises a little bit more uh, to the top. The accuracy, however, uh, absolutely awesome accuracy. Uh, again, it's not sighted in. These are not sighted in for this pistol, but uh, that that be one heck of an accurate load. Uh, I would say it's uh, significantly faster. Uh, well, it's faster, but it's also much more accurate than the uh, standard mini mags. We have one that we have one that's dropped out at the bottom here, owing to that uh, that one shot that was uh, lower than average. And we also have one that's up at, up above here, which I could say would easily account for the one that uh, was above the average. The average the average being a, a particular range that was from. Uh, 1155 to 1221. Great accuracy, fantastic. I'm very, very pleased with uh, my daughter's revolver here. Now this is the CCI short. Let's uh, take a look at the results on that one. Uh, super numbers. I mean, for for a uh, cartridge that's only supposed to be delivering 830 feet per second from a rifle barrel. Uh, this is this is a superb velocity. I let me look on it and make sure. I don't believe that these are measured with a pistol barrel. Um, it just says uh, target short. It doesn't specify that they're for pistols, uh, but boy, uh, terrific terrific velocities that are very very close to being uh, full velocity at 813 feet per second versus uh, the advertiser. Um, let's see. We had a uh, average of all shots exactly at 801 feet per second, extreme spread of 40 feet per second, and standard deviation of 14. That's pretty good. That's pretty good numbers. Um, look at this target. I mean, this is this is <laughs> this is a this is a nice target. Uh, it's almost zeroed in. I'd say it's just one click off. Uh, off center, and maybe it could come up uh, one click if I, if I was only going to be shooting shorts. But as it is, uh, this this gun is sighted in for the 22 shorts for uh, for all intents and purposes. I've got three three in the 10, uh, one in the X, and uh, two in the two in the nine. But as I say, if that was if that was uh, coordinated to be uh, fired with, if that uh, revolver was coordinated with that ammunition. Uh, they'd all be in the 10. So far, so good. Now we get to these uh, CCI CB longs. Not so good. Here we have, uh, you've heard you heard the velocities. We had uh, 505, 495, 532, 539, and 480 and with an advertised velocity out of a rifle barrel of 710 feet per second with a with a 29 grain bullet. Um, the um, average of all shots was 510 feet per second, extreme spread of 59, standard deviation of 22. But you got to look at this. This is uh, pretty bad. And what we have here is a classic situation of, uh, we have a classic situation of uh, instability. Um, we had, uh, uh, let's see, Two shots, it were five, one was 539 and one was 532. I guarantee you that those were the ones that managed to make it to the bullseye. Uh, they, they were marginally stabilized. Uh, here we have one that keyholed in sideways. Um, this one here came in, uh, that's really elliptical. That, that bullet went in at a 45 degree angle. And this hole here is uh, also elliptical, that's egg shaped. So. Uh, as you can see, that's that's what happens when you have uh, rifling that's not uh, fast enough for uh, the given velocity for the length of the bullet that's being used. So, but we didn't expect much out of it. This is a this is a curious ammunition, which is basically for quietness, and you wouldn't use it for quietness out of a revolver because the revolver is simply louder anyway. So, uh, but for a but for a, what it's made for for a rifle, it's good stuff. Here's a real surprising one: CCI Quiet. Um, I got to get more of these. 
here we have a uh, here we have a round that uh, it's advertised at a again a velocity of 710 feet per second um, but we got an average of 656 feet per second out of a out of a revolver. That's very very good. I I don't know I don't know what that dynamic is. That as the velocity goes down, the pressure goes down. It seems to be that uh, the the barrel gap is uh, doesn't has less effect on it on the uh, velocity drop. The uh, extreme spread was 89 and the standard deviation was 29. But take a look at the target, huh? It was I've got. I've got all but one in the in the ten and X. Um, that's terrific. That's absolutely. I mean, this 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 revolver is spot on with that ammunition. The CCI quiet. So all in all, if I were to superimpose all these targets, uh, sighted in for sighted in for uh, the uh, CCI mini mags, if I were to sight it in just a just a tiny bit, a uh, half inch to the left. Uh, everything would be, everybody would be shooting into the same spot on a, on a uh, 50 foot target. And I presume, I presume that except for, except for bullet drop. So that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to get up again. My, I'm going to take a break. My knee is, my knee is killing me. But um, anyway, I love this revolver. Uh, maybe, maybe she'll give me a chance to shoot it more. It's, uh, it's terrific. It's uh, got a nice, nice trigger. Uh, as you can see, it's capable of very fine accuracy. Uh, sight to, the sights are dynamite. The sights are terrific. Um, I just need to knock it over maybe one more click, and I'll be I'll be very very happy. So, for all my Patreon donors who've helped me purchase this ammo that brings you these uh, these uh, test fires, uh, I thank you so much. And uh, for everybody, I thank you so much for your prayers uh, during this time of recuperation. It's it's a little bit tough to get around, and uh, so I'll be I'll be trying to present you more videos uh, very shortly. I've got uh, many more things we can talk about. Uh, getting set up, getting set up down here with the lighting and all that stuff. I'm I'm the lighting director and the sound uh, electrician, all this stuff, and the videographer, producer, director. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm the I'm, all those all those things that you see rolling down the, the list of credits in a movie. That's what I'm doing by myself. Now I gotta now I gotta splice out all those parts where I walked down range and came back and everything and edit it, and then I gotta load it up. So, so I appreciate your I appreciate your patience. Uh, I'm not gonna be getting around as quickly as before. So, it'll take it'll take a little bit more time to, to put these up, but. Uh, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I really would appreciate that. Give me a thumbs up on that uh, uh, screen there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell. God bless.